There is a very simple reason why Tenet is a bad movie, or more accurately, a very well-made, terrible movie. You know what that means? It's Latin. It means no thyself. You see, Tenet isn't just a Christopher Nolan movie. Tenet is the Christopher Nolan movie. It is de it is distilled Nolan. It's like overdosing on Nolanisms. You know the ones. Nolanisms, unclear archetypes, tragic deceased wife, nonlinear time. Nolanisms, exposition guys, lengthy diatribes, lots of bloodless fights. Keep it to a keep it to a CGI, CGI. Big brain theory time. Brilliant directors, which Christopher Nolan is, rightly gain success and autonomy. They earn the right to be unconventional and make more personal, more sort of auteur movies, to really take a movie that could be a forgettable, homogenized Hollywood product and make something groundbreaking. But when these directors' successes accumulate, sometimes they get too much control. Let's say you're like a martini. So you ask your bartender, Christopher Nolan, for one, and he makes it dry, and you like it because you've got good taste. So you ask for another, and he suggests why not try a dirty dry martini, and you like that one too. Next up, bartender Christopher Nolan says, how about a Gibson? And you try a Gibson and it knocks your socks off. You're having a great time. Right now you're thinking bartender Christopher Nolan is the finest bartender from Portland, Maine to Portland, Oregon for that matter. And you tell him, dealer's choice. So he suggests the Nolan Gibson. And he has gone too far. What I'm saying is even great directors have to be reined in at some point. Tarantino went overboard with The Hateful Eight and he got reined in and we got the masterful Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. No one challenged George Lucas and so we got the prequels. After the massive success of The Matrix, no one challenged the Wachowskis and so we got The Matrix Reloaded and Matrix Revolutions, and Speed Racer, and Jupiter Ascending, and Ninja Assassin. Oh, God. In my mind, there is a sweet spot where directors get to use their vision, but they still aren't allowed to go overboard. Now in Tenet, the Nolanisms are there to excess, and it damages the film. Now, he's always had a tendency to work in archetypes. Uh, this is very prominent in Inception, if you think of the very sort of low detail, low resolution uh, bodyguards and surroundings in the start and the snow fortress as well. That actually suited Inception because they were very much just mechanisms of the brain. But in Tenet, characters are even more archetypical. They are basically just chess pieces and the protagonist doesn't even get a name. Everyone is so lightly sketched that I just didn't care about anyone. I was just watching it. I'm thinking, who are these characters? Like, People show up to support the protagonist. They don't get a name. I don't know who they're working for. They, they just turn up and they disappear. I was like, why would I care about them? I, I don't know who they are. The only person we seem to be asked to care about is actually extremely unsympathetic. So this character, an arms dealer's wife who only cares about her son becomes one of the priorities for our protagonist after one meeting. The world is ending, but uh, you gotta save this whammon in particular. As for the nameless protagonist, uh, he's just too perfect. He's a Marty Stew. The guy's a nameless, flawless, amazing fighter with no history. It's really boring. Christopher Nolan never goes for easy, simple plots, and, and that is admirable. He is innovative, but this plot is beyond convoluted. Now, I like challenging complicated films, but the deluge of exposition necessary to make the plot half comprehensible is absolutely painful. Thing is, if I need to read a thesis in order to understand the film, it's probably very clever and big-brained, but it's not going to be enjoyable. You see, when a film goes from complicated to convoluted, 
then I just get confused. When I'm confused, I can't judge character's actions. I can't form expectations that might be subverted. And my hearing isn't great, but multiple people have confirmed that they also struggle to hear large chunks of the exposition. Sometimes it was inaudible due to the particular delivery, to an accent, to someone wearing a mask, or to background noise. But they left that in the final film, which to me indicated that they basically didn't care if you heard it or not. And that kind of confirmed to me that all this exposition ultimately didn't matter. We weren't meant to understand it. We're just meant to sort of go along with the plot. I suggest you don't worry about this sort of thing and just enjoy yourself. That goes for you all too. Yeah. Uh, understandably, there is copious violence and fighting in the film, but because Christopher Nolan needs to keep that sweet, sweet 12A rating, then everything is bloodless. That means it's less real, it has less impact, and once again, I don't care. In fact, it's so bad that in the final battle, the bad guys are basically off screen. They are so indistinct, you don't even see them. That just made it even more abstract and absurd, and so I got more confused, and so I cared less. Ground rule here, you should not be bored in a battle scene. So all of this just affirms that the number one Nolanism here is that he was a heck of a lot more interested in a cool plot mechanic than he was in the story. And let's just get this out of the way now, because this was my experience. Uh, most LGBT audiences are going to find the numerous references to things and people being inverted very unintentionally funny. I mean, that was kind of a bonus. I enjoyed that. But anyway, this film has a convoluted sort of color by numbers plot based around the mechanic of inversion. And as cool as that concept is, the film lacked humanity. It was 2.5 hours of characters I didn't care about in a plot I couldn't follow. And Robert Pattinson was absolutely great. The soundtrack was really great, but that doesn't make for a good movie. Tenet was bad. Go watch The Prestige again. That is all from me for this week. If you like what I do, please do like this video and subscribe to the channel. Because I'm a tiny channel, every new subscriber is an absolute delight. And uh, also spread the word. That would be super appreciated. And uh, yeah, who knows? I might even make a video on a horror film again. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be a crazy concept? Thanks, y'all. Tschüss.